Hi, it's Al, founder and CEO of Next Health. In this podcast, you will learn as a dentist and as an, as an orthodontist why you need to think and act like a tech entrepreneur. Orthomarketing.com, 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice. Well, hello, everybody in podcast land. This is Dean Steinman, and we're back with another podcast for you. Hope everybody is enjoying their summer of 2021. Um, those of you who are in the, in the West Coast, hopefully you're staying nice and cool if possible. And if you're East Coast, you're staying dry because it's been a pretty wet and hot summer across the, across the board. Um, so well, I'm really excited today to have a special guest with me. Um, those of you who run a, um, a practice know the difficulty in, in regards to um scheduling appointments, be, have, getting the staff involved, um, having the right platform for people to um, make your website a living, breathing creature. So I have with me um, Al Uden, who is the um, CEO and um, founder of Next Health. How are you doing today, Al? I'm doing well, and thank you so much for having me, Dean. It's great oh, to be here. My pleasure. Great, yeah. great. Um, so, um, you know, you're a, fellow, you're a fellow New Yorker as, as well as I am, so I don't know if you watch the, uh, you know, if you watch the the home run derby, but the Met, you know, the guy from the Mets, Pete Pete Alonso, won it last night. So it's always good to see our New York pride out there. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm a sports fan, so all, all good. And um, so you know, tell us a little bit about you know Aluden and uh, you know how you came up with uh, with Next Health. Yeah, so I was um, uh, the, the, I started the company out of college, um, and 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 the story behind the the company is that uh, I was a pre med student, and you know one of the things you have to do you know when you're a pre med student is that you have to uh, show you as you know, most of the audience here knows you have to show that you have some exposure to the field of medicine uh, when you apply to medical school uh, or, or dental school and um, you know for the application process. And what most students end up doing is you know they do like free volunteering, free shadowing or something. I got a job <clears throat> as a receptionist in the Bronx at, a, at an actual doctor's office. And, and while there, you know, my job was to do that day-to-day admin work, uh, like scheduling patients, calling them, reminding them about their appointments, et cetera. And um, yeah, I know, like one of the things I, I noticed while working there is that I was, you know, at that time, I think I was like 21 or something, maybe younger. And being a young, young guy, one of the things I noticed is that there's a huge disconnect between, you know, what's happening in the rest of the world and then and, and what's happening uh, in the dental world. Um, meaning that, you know, you look, you look across um, our daily lifestyle, right? You know, we, we order food through DoorDash, uh, Instacart delivers our, our groceries for us. You know, we watch movies instantaneously now. There's no more, you know, cable or anything like that. You know, we, we ride Uber. There's no more taxi, right? And everything is, you know, on your fingertips. Everything is on your phone. It's very, it's all very convenient for you as a, as a consumer, as a patient. But, you know, once you step into a dental office, it's a totally different world. You know, you have to um, yeah. call to book an appointment. You have to do it in certain hours. You have to fill out stacks of paper, which is, you know, still amazing to me. Um, and then, you know, you, uh, once you leave the office, you, you know, uh, three weeks later, you get a uh, you get a mail uh, with with an invoice with a with a statement uh, <laughs> to pay the office, and half the time people forget what that what what it's even about, right? Anyway, it's a, it's a really jarring experience uh, going from this like really daily convenient life we live, you know, and going to a dental office today. So, anyway, so, so saw the problem. I was already you know working there as as a staff member, you know, and I knew that if uh, technology existed from end to end, you know, that could you know all the way from scheduling a patient. Just like I would as a receptionist, to you know, having them fill out their new, new, new patient paperwork, you know, having them pay, leave a re- review, all of it end to end, the whole whole patient experience, and something that's you know, not only digitizes the patient experience end to end through scheduling, through payments, through reminders, through recalls, all those features, but something that's also you know, real time, bi-directionally integrated with you know, Dentrix, EagleSoft, Open Dental, those systems out there, OrthoTrack, um, something that's fully integrated, it it'll automate, you know, half of my job as a receptionist, but it also will give patients a great experience, right? So anyway, so th- that's sort of the concept, you know, I got myself and my co-founder who was a, you know, uh, a software engineer. Um, I knew how to code as well. We built the initial product ourselves. You know, we, we got our first customer in New York. Um, and, you know, today today we're, we're over um, some 120 employees, over $50 million in funding, and, you know, growing some 200% annually. So it's taken off, yeah. Oh, that's that's awesome. You know, it's funny is in the marketing world um, for years, my biggest hurdle has been people letting people schedule appointments from 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 my clients. It's it's yeah. it's funny. Um, 
you know, and a lot of them put it on the website, click here to schedule an appointment, and they don't, it's a request an appointment. <laughs> and, you know, and I say to them, well, if you want to go to a restaurant, do you want to request a reservation or you want to make a reservation? Right. Same thing with what you're saying. Do you want, you, when you go to, you know, the, or if you go to DoorDash, do you want to request your food or do you want to order your food? Right. Well, you know, right. and now, given, you know, and so it's always been a huge hurdle for, um, for me as a marketer to use the call to action as that because I found that, um, you know, that is the biggest hole in an office is the staff is letting them yeah. answer the phone or people filling out a form. And, you know, the statistic, last statistic I read is that if somebody is interested in your service, um, every hour that passes, um, 10% probability of them becoming a customer yeah. drops. So yeah, yeah. basically, you know, after two hours, 20%, three hours, 30%. So if he fills out a form, you know, at eight at night, 10 at night, by eight the next morning, that's, you know, uh, you know, almost a hundred percent chance that person's gone, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. So by offering, you know, this, and it's great that you're able to fill that, that, that void there. Um, you know, what I found is a big, big challenge and maybe, and you can tell us how you, you, you've overcome this is the softwares because the softwares yeah. are running the practice and they've got the calendars. So how is it that you're able to um, work with major software players and implement mm -hmm. A, um, a scheduling program with them because most of the time they won't let you write, you know, get into their software or write to it, you know, and it, you know, practices that we tried to run two multiple calendars just didn't work. You know, so we said, okay, let's set up a Google calendar and they get this calendar and the, and the staff's, you know, complaining about doing double the amount of work. So walk me through your, um, your thought process and how you, you were able to figure this part out and get them to, to work with you. Yeah, 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 definitely. I think, um, you know, a couple of different comments, right? Uh, historically, I think, you know, dentists and, and, and or even especially ortho practices, the ones with the more complicated workflows, haven't adopted online scheduling primarily because, you know, there hasn't been anything out there that um, actually fits their workflow and that actually can, you know, read and write into whatever dental software that they're using, right? I mean, you know, we built a platform that literally mimics the work that I was doing, meaning like, you know, if I'm a patient, I can pick, you know, that I want, uh, an Invisalign treatment, I can pick, you know, um, I want it between, you know, 2 to 5, uh, you know, 2 p.m. tomorrow in operatory 2 between the hours of 5 and, and, and 2 p.m. I can put in my insurance, I can put in my credit card, and then I can fill out my new patient paperwork all in one place. And then all of that information that I just put in, right, fully customized by, by each office, then gets automatically synchronized um, with whatever system you're using, exactly as if your receptionist would be, you know, synchronizing it, including the color of the appointment. Uh, which is, you know, fascinating, right? So, yeah, to answer your question, Dean, you know, like how we do these things, um, there's a couple of different things that we do, which is, uh, first is, you know, we, we have partnerships with the majority of the systems out there. Um, th that's one side of it. The second side of it is that we built our own in-house technology. What, and, and what it's able to do is that, you know, if you download our widget on your server, you know, majority of our customers, they have some sort of a server, even if it's cloud-based, but, you know, you download this widget on your server, you put in your um, Windows username and password, and what it's able to do is it, it's able to actually go to the source, meaning, you know, you have a, you have a computer and, you know, you have lots of open dental installed on it, right? And open dental, what it does is that, you know, it, it, on the database that you have in that, you know, server that you have, um, it stores all that information that, you, that, that it has about your office, right? Like your, you know, what times you're open, you know, the, all the patients you have, the five to 10,000 patients you have, all the providers you have. So we just go directly to that source. It, it, it's, it's hard work, it's complicated, um, and it's really, really hard to get right, uh, which is why, you know, majority of companies don't do this. Uh, but, you know, we figured it out where we basically go to the source and we say, okay, this is what it looks like. We can update that source and we can read that source. Um, so, yeah, instead of, you know, going through the traditional route of, um, you know, banging on, you know, like all these large companies and their doors and you know, asking them to give us access or whatever. We just go to the server, we go to the source, we, we read that source and we and we update that source. Um, simple as that, you know, sounds simple, but really, really hard to execute on. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, it did. You know, it certainly yeah. did. So, you know, um, so obviously I'm sure you had a challenge of getting them to A, accept you and then B, let you write to their, their, their platform. So mm -hmm. uh, what was the main um, objections that you did have and how'd you overcome them? Yeah, I mean, when, when we first started, um, no one wanted to work with us. I mean, I mean, as, as you already know, you know generally speaking, um, vast majority of the systems out there, they don't let you actually read, uh, I mean, uh, write uh, new appointments, new patients into their system, right? Um, so what we actually do is we work with uh, uh, the doctors themselves directly as opposed to the dental software vendors, right? So if you're a doctor, you know, you own that server, right? It's your server, you pay for it, you maintain it. 
and the data you have on that server, you own that as well, right? So we go, we, we go to the doctor and we go directly to them and we say, hey, give us your Windows username and password. And once you put in that Windows username and password, we don't really have to go through you know, uh, the vendors like the, like the EagleSofts, the open downloads of the world, right? We can go directly to the server as opposed to through the vendors. So, so that's, that's how we do it, right? We will go to the server as opposed to through the vendors, uh, which means ah. that we have access to really anything and, and everything. Um, and we were able to give you much, much better experience. Wow, oh, yeah. great. Um, yeah. So, you know, obviously now in the last year, you know, we're in a new world, you know, and um, people are used to, and I don't think it's good, but we're never going to go back. You know, people are used to everything virtual, um, especially, yep. you know, schooling and, and, you know, and for many of our clients, you know, virtual consults have exploded lately and, um, you know, practices that are making, you know, nice, you know, six figure incomes just from virtual consults. And, you know, so yep. um, over the last year, you know, since, you know, since, you know, 2000, when everything's kind of, you know, hit the fan there, what's the biggest surprise that that, that you've seen in the, um, in the industry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I would say the biggest surprise <laughs> is that most dentists still think we're going to go back to what it, what it was like in 2019. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, as opposed to embracing the change, embracing this new world. Um, I think all of us are, you know, in this mindset, like, oh, things will, you know, go back to the way it was. And, um, you know, let's, let's turn back the clock. Let's go back, you know, to how it was and everything will be uh, rosy. And, you know, uh, I think things uh, will, will be what it was in, in 2019 and 2018 and before that. Um, and I think, you know, like we, we as an industry need to accept that, you know, COVID came in and it accelerated all the trends that were already happening in terms of, you know, digitization, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. I mean, maybe 10 plus years. So it gets squeezed in all the change um, that was going to happen over the next decade into just one year. And that's jarring. You know, that's hard to accept as, as like, you know, psychologically as a human, right? That's why we want to go back. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the there are some like really, really progressive and, and modern uh, DSOs and, and, and dental offices out there that are actually embracing this change. So for example, um, a national dental, dental out of Dallas, you know, Scott, um, Emmett, Emmett, uh, Emmett, uh, Emmett Scott, uh, uh, DSO, or like, you know, the smilest out of New York, like some of these, you know, more progressive ones that are our customers as well, embracing this new change and actually going out there and, and, and acquiring some of the smaller guys as well and like rolling them up and modernizing them. So anyways, the, the, to answer your question, I think, you know, I've been surprised by uh, how resistant we still are uh, to this new world. And I think we just need to embrace it. And the ones that, that embrace it will be ahead of everyone else. Yeah. I, I agree. You know, when, when I have a client and they come aboard, and or their existing client, and they're open to um, position themselves as a forward-thinking, um, mm -hmm. technology-driven practice, they see a huge difference in yeah. their um, number of new patients and the ability to take them. And now that we, you know, and to me, it's all about call to action on a website. Somebody goes to a, a dental website, they're yeah. not, it's not Etsy or eBay. They're not, they're not there to, to, to shop around and hang. They're there for a reason. They want to make an appointment. You know, exactly. so um, now you, you know, by having this, it's, this really opens up a, a massive door for, for for the orthodontic industry, dental industry, and for us as a marketing company to to, to really make our clients successful. So I I, I'm, I think you, what you guys are doing is is, is awesome. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think that you so, know one quick comment that I think you know, all of us miss is that millennials, the, the people that grew up with the internet, are about to hit their forty. Most of them have kids. Right. And they're the ones, you know, now spending the most money on, on dental care and health care, right? Um, so, right. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just speaking to the, exactly, you're, 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 it's a perfect storm. You know, it really, you, exactly. you know, you're, 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 you're great, great for you there. So, um, yeah. so what's one myth that you want to debunk about Next Health that um, it's out there that, that, you know, somebody hears your name and so that? What's one thing that's just negative out there that you say, no, no, that's not even close to what we do, or this is not something. So, what's one myth out there that you think you want to, you know, set the record straight? Yeah, I think um, the, the the interesting thing about us is that you know, when we first started, uh, we really focused on getting online scheduling right, and that's how we marketed ourselves and sold ourselves uh, to customers. And I think you know that that's still sort of the persistent theme, which is you know most people think we're just an online scheduling platform. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, you know, from an engineering perspective, we we've invested so much money into our product that today it, it's way more than you know, much much more than just an online scheduling platform. Our goal always has been, you know. We want to be able to give you a platform where you can fully customize and fully brand and actually own the end-to-end -end patient experience, you know, from the patient 
discovering on Google to scheduling an appointment to messaging your office, you know, filling out their new patient paperwork, getting an appointment reminder, coming into the office, paying you, going back home, you know, getting a recall reminder and actually scheduling another appointment through that recall, all taken care of through us. Um, so, so, you know, that, that's uh, so just the fact that, you know, we've expanded so much out of online scheduling um, is, 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 I think, something to be aware of. The other thing is, you know, that I, I spoke about earlier about the, you know, the fact that we can buy directionally in real time, integrate with, you know, all these different um, uh, dental software out there. And the technology we've developed is so good, so reliable um, that other dental tech companies use that technology. So some of the systems you may be using out there. Um, it's our technology, and you might you just may not know about it. So I'll give you an example. Um, Quip, uh, the, the toothbrush company, uh, you know, they started recently working with dentists directly. Um, the, the technology that powers the connection between Quip, uh, Quip and, and, and the dental offices is powered by us. Smile Direct Club, um, they started working with dentists directly recently uh, where they you know, refer patients and send patients um, to dental offices. The connection between those dentists and Smile Direct Club is, is powered by us. So a lot of the vendors and the technologies you may be already using out there uh, is likely powered by us. So that technology, you know, we're able to read and write and synchronize with the dental software in real time. Uh, it's extremely valuable to the point that you know other tech companies are powered by it. So if there's a myth or whatever in a clarification, um, I want to say you know like that's sort of the the thing that I think most people are not aware of, um, but you know it shows the power of what we actually built. Yeah. Wow, awesome. And um, yep. as far as, um, you know, put on your your glasses now and let's look mm -hmm. into the, the future. Um, mm -hmm. You know, about your company or just in general, where do you see the orthodontic and dental industry in 12, 24 months from now? Because if, if I was talking to you back in January 2020, we wouldn't even, you know, we'd have a whole different conversation. You know, there was no COVID back then. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, obviously you're trying to come in, come up with, you're trying to have people completely change their, their methodology of thinking and the way they run their business, but now they have no choice. So yeah. um, let's, you know, so put your glasses on and where do you see things going um, in the next, you know, year and year, year or two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the, I think the, the dental practices, the ortho practices that are going to thrive and that are going to survive are the, are the owners and and the dentists that think of themselves as entrepreneurs first and dentists second and then the reason i i say that is because you know uh, we are headed in a world in terms of you know insurance reimbursement the competitive landscape the private equity firms coming in and you know, rolling up all these dsos and uh, and and patients themselves you know um adjusting their expectation of you know what they what they want from a dental office is so dramatic that you know you really do have to become today a modern 21st century business with you know great support, great patient communication, uh, great online tools. Not only that, but you know when the patient comes into the office, they need to feel like you know it's a modern, sleek, zen-like office. You know the chairs need to be updated, right. all of it end to end, right? Um, they don't want to have to wait more than five minutes. They want to you know talk to um, you know like the hygienist, the staff that are really well dressed and you know well spoken, all of it, right? The end to end <clears throat> experience. And, you know, like I said, millennials are, are about to hit their 40s. They're the ones spending the most money now. They have kids now. And that, that's what they're looking for, right? <clears throat> and in right. order to deliver that sort of an experience, you really have to think like a tech entrepreneur. Um, and, and you really have to, you know, shift away from the mindset like, hey, I'm, I'm here to just fix teeth to, hey, I'm, I'm a you know, tech entrepreneur. I'm here to build a business that will serve my customers, my, my patients. And I need to adopt all these technologies, re, you know, update my office, remodel it to give you know, these, these new millennial consumers what they want, right? So those are the ones that I think will sort of take off and survive um, and actually will acquire some of these older offices that can't adjust. Um, and you know, I think that's a great future, to be honest. I mean, some will struggle to get there, but overall, I think that's a great future, yeah. I, I agree. You can, you know, that's why you walk into you know, an, an Apple store and it's cool. You, 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 know, you take a look yeah. at you know, a Tesla, you're like, wow, this is the coolest car ever. There's nothing in it. It's, it's sleek. It's cool. <laughs> it's, you know, um, you know, the bells and whistles are not there anymore. It's, it, you yeah. know, there's less is more, you know, yeah. and to make things, you know, to make things smoother, faster, better, you know, that's the world we want. We want. And, and I think people are going to want immediate gratification even more down, yeah. down the road because they got used to this. There's no, there's no going back. You know, right. um, especially when you, when you taste it, you don't want to, you don't want to go back to, you know, you taste eating good steak. You don't want to go back to hamburger helper, <laughs> you know, yeah. same thing yeah. with, with this. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look yeah. at a um, yeah, if you look at a business like Starbucks, right? I mean, Starbucks today, people don't talk about this enough, but they're they're a technology business today. They're they're the second largest app with the second largest uh, payment processing volume. So their app drives more of their business than their in, in person visits, which is fascinating. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Didn't know that. You know, so it's changed. And you think of coffee, you think of brick and mortar. You think going in. So, it, you know, it makes life easier. You want to order it while you're there and come in and pick it up. And, and nobody wants, you know, and we're going to a paperless world. So you don't have to pay for, you know, you don't have to handle the cash back and forth. You know, it's a, it's, you know, it's a no brainer. You know, it's, it's great. And, you know, and, and to offer that platform there, what you're doing is, you know, I'm a hat, my hat's off, man. You were, you've been a, a godsend for a company like me because you're able to make my life easier and make my clients successful. So you know, I'm super stoked about that. So thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, as an entrepreneur, a business owner, a, a, a tech person, somebody that's looks like always um, you know, learn, growing, um, what's your go-to? How do you take things to the next level and learn and, and stay on top of things? Do you have a, a podcast, a book, a, you know, a blog that you read that you can recommend to the listeners to um, to check out and make that part of their daily routine? Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the things about uh, running a technology business is that um, uh, technology businesses change every year. Uh, I, I think like, you know, we, we, we grow and we change uh, in a year what yeah. any other business would take like 10 plus years. Uh, so right. that means you, know, you have to have a really fast pace of learning. You have to learn things really, really quickly and, and adjust with it. And honestly, you know, what I've discovered is that the biggest way to stay up to date and actually learn as quickly as possible is to not look to the future, but look to the past. So one of the things that I, that I do almost on a daily basis is I, I read a lot of history. Yeah. All the way back to ancient times to, you know, today. Right. So the current book I'm reading actually is on the history of Coca-Cola. All the way from you know how they started back in the 1880s in uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, post Civil War, um, to how you know it became this like ubiquitous brand today, and all the technology, all the distribution, the whole business itself, you know how how it was built, um, you know from. Anyways, yeah. So uh, what I would recommend, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of great great history books out there, but you know for everyone here uh, that's running a business, uh, look to the past, read a lot of history, and you know once you have a great understanding of history and how things have been built before. You'll notice that you know whatever's happening in the future, it's not a surprise. Yeah, it's a different flavor or, or maybe a different context, but it, it's all kind of the same over and over again. So yeah, it's funny, it's funny you say that to go. No, it's funny you say that go to go back. So I'm a big reader as, as well, and I try to read you know as many you know business books or you know informational books as possible. Mm -hmm. And just out of the blue, I picked up maybe six months ago how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, yeah. which was written over 85 years ago. Yep. Okay. And it's still more relevant probably today than it was 85 years ago. And how, you know, you have to go back and, and things, some things, as much as much as things change, they still stay the same. Yep. And when you say that, because, you know, I, I you know, I, um, I read all of Gary Vee's books and I read, you know, a lot of Seth Godin's books and I read a lot of, you know, marketing books and, and technology books, but, you know, to, to, go back and read a book that was written 85, 90 years ago about marketing and, and sales and, and, and relationships. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty great to be able to just get to the basic foundations that things haven't changed. And back then everything was built right, you yeah. know, and it's, and, and if you, you know, there's no shortcuts, you know, as, 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 as you know, as a, as a business owner, entrepreneur, um, shortcut will kill you. There's not you yeah. have one chance to get out there and do the right thing. You know, and if you take a shortcut, you fall on your face. There's no, there's no coming back from that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a as a as a business owner, you know, I think that I think the thing you're serving is human nature, right? Um, you know, you're, like generally speaking, as a business, you know, you're either making uh, your customers more money or you're saving them time. And you know, for dentists, orthodontists, you're generally speaking saving you know your your patients a lot of time by you know giving them good care, right? Um, and and human nature, when it comes to you know saving time at least, and then the convenience that they want, that never changes. Like as, as humans, we always, always want more convenient. We want a painless experience. We want it quick. We want it simple. We want it frictionless. And that, that'll never change, right? And one of the yeah. best ways to learn, you know, about, about sort of the, the cycle of that and, and the history of that is just to read a lot of history books. And you'll see that human nature actually doesn't, in fact, change. Yeah, it does. It goes in cycles. It'll still be. Yep. It's always there. It's just some, you know, up and down. Um, you yep. know, everything is everything in cycles. You know, from yep. financial to informational to educational. You know, in different in different levels. 
but yeah. it's um you know it's it's all this, it's all the same so it's it's, it's great how you know you, you see that there and you have to adapt you know yeah. i use that quote all the time you know I'm, i don't know if you ever um, saw the movie or moneyball or read the, the book moneyball um but mm-hmm. i use this quote constantly that um, you know billy bean said my favorite line in this movie is adapt or die and yep. they have no choice in business and in yep. life if you don't adapt you're gone yep. You know, so yep. with, you know, especially putting in practice out there, guys, you know, um, you know, listen to what Al said, you know, you have to, off, you know, be up to snuff. You have to sh- present yourself um, using the best technologies, using visual as well as, you know, um, platforms and make sure that you offer something different there and make sure that you are offering what your people want. You know, that's the thing. You, know, you have to think out of the box there. Um, yep. and, well, you know, two, two last questions for you, um, Al. So um, if, if you had to pick, Three words to describe mm-hmm. next health. What would you say they are? Oh man, that's a great question. Here's here's maybe not words, but phrases, right? Um, yeah. And these are the internal internal values that, that we live by, which is um, our, our our very like first value as a company is do what's right for the customer. Um, and I think, you know, as, as a business, right, just from a pure you know, business perspective, um, doesn't matter, you know, what your product is, doesn't matter how innovative you are, doesn't matter, you know, uh, like what the latest and greatest thing you're doing is. Uh, if you do what's right by the customer, uh, if you're focused on the customer and you serve them well, um, I think generally speaking, that's a good business strategy, no matter what. Customers will always, always never, customer expectations never go down. Like it always goes up. And as long as, you know, you serve the customers, you give them good support, you give them, you know, a good, good, good experience, you know, from the product to sales, to, to marketing, to, you know, everything end to end, I think, you know, as a business, uh, you're going to win. Um, so anyways, yeah. So I think, you know, we, we always do what's right for the customers. And, and to the point that, you know, during COVID, uh, I think half of 2020, uh, we gave away our product for free to our customers uh, for them to, you know, go virtual for them to communicate with their patients, you know, book, uh, book appointments, collect, you know, online payments and, and all of it. Um, yeah, even though you know, it hurt us for six months in terms of revenue, we had like zero revenue coming in. Um, we were willing to you know, go to our investors, raise more money and, and do what's right for the customers. And I think overall it ended up uh, long-term doing a lot of great things for us and built this great brand that we have today. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Yeah. So uh, three words, uh, I'm going to use the phrase, do what's right for the customers. Um, and, you know, it, it sounds cheesy, but, you know, we, we truly do believe it and, and we truly do live by it on, on a daily basis. Yeah. Cool. All right. Next question. So you're a, a native New Yorker. So you're giving you the opportunity to put a billboard up in Times Square. Mm-hmm. OK. What's it going to say? Does it have to be about the business? Could be just your personal thoughts. It could be just something motivational, whatever it is, or it could be your business. What, what are you putting up on Times Square? What do you want, you know, five million people to see today? I think if, if there was like one thing that I would want more people to learn or, or think think about, which would be the concept of thinking first principles. Thinking first principles, you know, essentially what, what it boils down to is asking the why behind the things you do or, or, or asking the why behind the ideas that you just accept, right? I mean, you know, one of the fascinating things is I have a, I have a nephew who's um, just like started to talk. And, and one of the things he does is that, you know, he'll always ask you why. Like, you know, why, why does this thing do this? Why does this thing do that? Right. And, right. and as, you know, as a kid, you, you always ask the whys, but, you know, as an adult, you really don't do that. You sort of like accept the world for what it is and kind of, you know, live your life. Right. And I think, you know, right. one of the things we don't realize is that this world was built and, and the society that we live in and all the things that, that we go through in life. Right. It was built by just other people. Right. People that came before us or maybe our neighbors, whatever. Right. And it's OK to question those things, you know, ask the why, like, why, you know, why am I doing this? You know, uh, why, why is my business the way it is? You know, why does this world exist this way? Right. You know, just literally be a kid uh, in your imagination and ask the why and question everything. Right. Anyway, so the concept of thinking. Free letters. Free letters. Yeah. W-H-Y. Why? <laughs> You're right. Yeah, yeah. Why, right. You know, yeah. would, is it an exclamation point or a question mark? I think, it's, I think that's a good, yeah, I think it's a question mark. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. I, I cool. think it's important to ask the why behind okay. the thing you do as a, as a society, as an individual. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. And, you know, one of the, one of the fascinating things is that this is my first real job as well. And I'm, I'm the founder right. and CEO, which right. means, you know, like by nature, I, I, I'm just, you know, like, I haven't gone through the indoctrination of having a real job before, <laughs> which means <laughs> that we do from a customer support to all of it. Right. My first thought is why, like, why are we doing this? You know, like explain to me why this makes sense. 
yeah. question. You got that question. You know, I mean, yeah. otherwise, if, except if just accept, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, you'll get beaten yeah. down. So great, love that. All right, um, I have two more quick ones for you. Mm -hmm. um, so, asteroids hitting Earth today. Okay, your last meal is coming up. Yep. What is it? I think it depends on, you know, like what, what I'm feeling like at that moment. Right now, uh, you, just, you just saw on Twitter, asteroids hitting Earth. You've got three hours. <laughs> oh, three hours is a long time. Yeah. I, I would say a steak, you know, I love like steak in general. Good, yeah. cool, good. Yeah, all yeah, right. yeah. And, the, and, the, and the final question, all right, yeah. which is the hardest one of all, Reese's peanut butter cup or a Hershey bar? That is a hard question. They, all, they both have their, you know, benefits. I would say, I would say a Hershey bar. Yeah. Really? Okay. Good. Yeah. Good answer. All righty. Yeah. Great. Um, cool. All right. So, um, you know, Al, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So if somebody has any questions, want to get in touch with you, want some more information, what's the best way for them to do so? Yeah. I think, you know, if you just go to our website, nexthealth.com, uh, N-E-X health, like healthcare.com, um, you, you'll see an email there. You'll see a number there and, and, and you can reach out to us from there. Yeah. Oh, great. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Joining us, um, guys out there, thanks so much for listening. Um, this is a terrific program. You guys should definitely do take a look at it there. And if you follow the um, the link in the bottom of the show notes here, you'll see some links over to our, our sites um, with the uh, ability to get more information and to sign up and to, to learn more. So you're out there in podcast land. Thanks so much, everybody. Be safe. Al, thanks so much for joining us. And um, everybody, enjoy your summer and make sure to get on board. All right. Be well. Thanks for having me. OrthoMarketing.com, 360-degree digital marketing solutions for your practice.